Are you curious about how you can use podcasts with kids? Podcasts are a wonderful way to learn new content quickly, but also in an engaging way. And I don't think I need to tell you that since you are listening to a podcast right now. However, I think about how your love of listening to podcasts can be transferred to your students. There are great podcasts for kids out there, and I have the perfect one for you to check out. In this episode, I am chatting with Jerry Kolber, who has extensive experience when it comes to educational entertainment. He is currently working on the Who Smarted podcast, which I highly recommend for you to listen with your students. His work ranges from Nat Geo's Brain Games to Netflix's Brain Child, co-produced by Pharrell Williams, to the Who Smarted podcast, where family audiences are consistently entertained and enlightened by Kolber's work. This isn't showcasing all his work, by the way. Definitely go check out his full bio in my show notes. It's pretty amazing. Colbert is the winner of a Parents' Choice Award, Imagine Award for Diversity and Entertainment, Cable Facts Award for Best Family Show, Common Sense Media Seal of Approval, and received an Emmy nomination for Primetime Informational Series or Special. His love of creating edutainment came from his experience of loving science and math as a child, but being unable to connect with it presented in the classroom, which I'm sure you might have had students like that. So that's how podcasts can really fit in with your students. Jerry is so great and so supportive of education and making it attainable and entertaining for kids, schools, and families. I had so much fun chatting with Jerry and he was such a delight. And I know that you're going to love listening to this episode. Welcome to the Elementary STEM Coach Podcast, a show that'll help you with lesson ideas, systems, and actionable tips to apply to your classroom. I am your host, Naomi Meredith, a former classroom teacher turned current STEM teacher and coach. With over a decade of experience teaching and a master's degree in STEM leadership, I am here to coach you throughout the year to help you gain back more time to create innovative experiences for your students. Grab your earbuds and let's get started. Well, thank you, Jerry, so much for being here. Um, We connected through a mutual friend, and I'm really excited about this collaboration because I think a lot of STEM teachers, well, the ones here listen to podcasts, but maybe they haven't thought about how they could add this with their students and how podcasting can be really beneficial for their kids and so on. So before we dive into all of that, if you wouldn't mind telling us about yourself, your background and then your involvement with um, the podcast that you help with. Sure. So uh, thank you, first of all, for having me here. It's, it's really fun to always get to talk to folks like you and, and talk to teachers. My background is a, uh, a TV producer primarily. I made uh, a show called Brain Games for National Geographic that I created that was a, a science show that ran for uh, seven or eight seasons. And then we made a TV show called Brain Child that ran on Netflix that was a 13-episode science series for 8- to 12-year-olds uh, hosted by a young woman of color with a, a female science expert. This was an awesome opportunity for some great representation and a lot of fun for, for the kids who uh, get exposed to science through the show. Personally, I was a very bad science student. Um, <laughs> if any of my, my science teachers know that like what I do now, they, they would think it must be a different Jerry Culver because... Um, I did not do well in school in science, but actually that was kind of a, a strength for me because I loved science growing up and I was always at the, the science museum, planetarium. And, you know, for me, it was, it was more a struggle with connecting with how the science was taught in the classroom. And my teachers were, were all very good teachers. It was more an issue of just the, the sort of traditional way materials presented. So as I started working in TV and, and media and, and audio, I, I always wanted to figure out a way to basically make the show that I wish had existed when, when I was a kid. And so that's Brainchild and, and now most recently, uh, Who Smarted, which is a 15-minute, <laughs> uh, three times weekly science and history podcast for elementary school kids. And Who Smarted is is the project we're talking about today. And, um, you know, the, the strength of Who Smarted is that it's, it's, it's short. Uh, it can be used as an entry um, into a subject matter in a classroom. It can be used on a car ride. And it's easy to access because it's audio. So it doesn't require a teacher to have permission to have video connections. It's very easy to use in the classroom. So, you know, it's got, it's got a lot of, um, a lot of problems that we've had with getting 
our TV shows use in the educational setting, we solved by creating an audio uh, audio podcast called Who Smarted. I love like that background of that, the reason why you went the podcast route, because that is so true when it comes to the media release and all of that. It is hard mm-hmm. for us to get subscriptions as teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, at my district, YouTube is blocked. So um, I have to unblock it as a teacher and I can't have students access it. So um, I think that's such a smart route and such definitely with the increase of podcasts anyway, um, we might as well get kids listening and engaging. And I love how you said that you created something that you wish you had as a kid. And I feel like a lot of teachers who are in the STEM space now, that's probably how they got into STEM because that Mm -hmm. didn't exist when we were kids. Um, We had science, but just having more of that integration of the science, technology, engineering, math, all in one. I think you would have been great at it, Jerry. I think that you would have been (laughs) awesome in a STEM classroom. (laughs) You would have probably. Yeah, you would have. You would have loved it. I do a whole video and audio production lesson with my kids, and you probably would have been my star student. (laughs) (laughs) Where were you when I needed you in Miami? I know. but you know the the other thing for us, and this is you know this is a bigger a bigger issue is STEM does not get the resources and support that it should at least in, in the United States, and that ranges literally from like we hear of teachers all the time who have to buy their own supplies and stuff mm-hmm. for classrooms, which is just that's ridiculous. And then mm-hmm. you know on the other on the other end of the spectrum, uh, STEM just isn't really featured in a really cool way in American media. It's always like you know nerdy or you know. Not always, but it's often portrayed <laughs> as this nerdy thing. It's it's not something that's especially young women and minority kids don't really see themselves represented still as much as they should. And then you fast forward, like think of where we're going to be in 20 years. If you don't think that technology is going to be the solution to all the problems we're facing right now, then you're like living under a rock. And <laughs> so it's it's so important that we uh, create curiosity and potential and a pathway into these careers for every possible kid. Like it's just us, almost a, our duty as a society to do that. And so that's why we're so excited to be able to support teachers who are, who are bringing STEM into the classroom because it's such a crucial thing to do. And, you know, it's so funny because like to your point, you know, it sometimes gets down to things like teachers going, Hey, we would love to use your, your brainchild show in the classroom we're not allowed to, to show videos in the class or Netflix yeah. is blocked or I don't have a subscription I can use. And then you go, okay, we'll put it on YouTube. Well, we can't use YouTube in the classroom yeah. because it's blocked. <laughs> and so like we always sort of drill down to like, how do we solve this problem? And it's like, oh, audio podcasts don't live on a single platform. It's just the one podcast. So a teacher can very proactively say, I'm going to play Who Smarted or one of the other you know educational podcasts. And the beauty of that is then they can have a way to make these subjects um, entertaining and easy for kids to get into. Uh, I think, and I think that's the biggest problem is like, we're just not, we're just not making it fun in media for children to get excited about STEM topics. So, you know, you're right. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. So that's why we're, that's why we're doing it. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. And I, and you're, you're not a former teacher, right? No, I'm a former terrible student. (laughs) But I like the way you're talking about this. This is so good that you're saying this because you aren't a teacher, but you recognize the importance of STEM subjects and why that's important for kids and the way that our country is going. Because I mean, it's true. Like us as teachers, we know what you're saying. Like you're preaching to the choir right here with all that you said. And it's like I when I was getting my my master's in STEM leadership, there is all these articles about how there's such a big drop off with kids getting into science because they think it's boring. Like there actually are studies about it. And yes, I teach STEM as a specials. All the kids in the schools get it. That's not always true in every building. Um, I get the Mm -hmm. kids five days in a row, um, once a month. Um, But a lot of schools don't have that and it's up to the classroom teachers. And so they might you know, I mean, it's a lot of work. And so sometimes they might not always put in the effort they want to do because it is Mm -hmm. a lot of work for science. And then the kids get bored and it's a whole cycle. And so 
I love with your pot, the podcast, the who's smarted. I was listening to the peanut butter one the other day and it's so, it's totally different than this. Like if you're a teacher who's ever done podcasts with your kids, a podcast for kids, well, it can be boring, but this one's not boring. So it's, has all these audio effects. There's just a lot of things that capture the kid's attention, um, where if they've never listened to a podcast, it's very quick, um, where kids Mm -hmm. don't sit there and get bored, the sound effects, the stories, the voices, um, just all the like interesting topics, the weirder the topic, I feel like the better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, 100%. Which, good. Yeah. How do you guys yeah. get inspiration yeah. for the episodes? Like, cause I know you have like kids who, or you have families who give reviews or is, do you guys just sit around and brainstorm ideas? Oh, we totally read the reviews and look for ideas. I, like we love when we get ideas from the kids and it's like some, you know, we, if you see like enough kids write in saying we want a Roblox episode, we're like, okay, we'll do an episode on Roblox or like do one on pizza or ice cream or, you know, gravity or whatever. So um, we totally look at that for inspiration. And then also our writers and producers all are always thinking about like, hmm, what could be a good to- uh, topic for who smarted? Um, so yeah, it comes from all over the place, but we love taking inspiration from our, we call them our smarty fans. So oh, yeah. our smarty <laughs> pants. Yeah. So we, we love, we love getting ideas from them. Yeah, it's the best. And just just to go back to a point you were just saying, you know, it's it's so we know there's so many teachers who who are 100 percent on board with the idea of, of just how important STEM is and they're STEM specialists. But we also know that teachers are burdened with so many requirements of how to teach and how to test and how to prepare. Plus, mm-hmm. gosh, you might have a life outside of school also. You know, <laughs> who knows? So yeah. we know we know it's like the, the idea that a teacher would have the bandwidth to also create like really fun, you know, engaging material. It's like it's like you guys are, are superheroes, but there is even a limit to that, you know. And mm-hmm. so we think of who smarted as kind of like the warm up act before the main comedian yeah. you know like or the main, <laughs> the main event yeah so it's like yep. we're not we're not going to teach the kid everything there is to know about peanuts and the history of peanuts but like we will get them excited to learn yep. more by making it fun by making the topic relatable and so that's the function we serve you know and yeah it's just we we just really want to support what's going on in classrooms and homes Any, anywhere there's potential stem education happening it's like we want to help make it easier make it more fun oh a hundred percent it's such a great way to build background knowledge um because with any topic, especially in STEM or science, you want to, not all kids have background on the topic. That's why we're a teacher. I tell my students that I don't know about this. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm a teacher. I'm going to do my job. I get to teach you. Um, But definitely a (laughs) podcast is so helpful because you want to find ways to engage students. And um, if they don't know about the topic, it's a great conversational starter. Um, And your podcasts are pretty Sure, I would say, but you could even pull like clips if you were a teacher Mm -hmm. and just listen to a little segment and you could listen to segments of that same episode throughout the week. So it's a really great conversational starter. So if you don't have Mm -hmm. what, 15, they're about 15 ish minutes, maybe a little less, Exactly. Um, but you could definitely take little chunks of that and it could just be a real, like you said, like a good conversational starter. And this can relate to the project that we're going to do, or it could even be if you are doing a podcast project, like I told you I do with my fifth graders, it's a really great way for students to get ideas to create their own podcast. So it might be even inspiration Mm -hmm. for them. And it's really cool how podcasting has just had this resurgence. Obviously, we're talking right now. But I tell my students that not all of you are going to be a YouTuber and you might not be great on camera, but there's something called podcasts. And mm-hmm. this has a lot of potential. And a lot of kids actually haven't heard of it, um, at, at least at yeah. my school. Um, but some kids have great podcasting voices. I'm like, oh, that was that you have a great voice for a podcast. And so it's just really cool. Just um, uh, just another way where kids can be inspired and be creative because mm-hmm. the show Who's Smarted is very creative and you work as a team, right? So what, yes. what are all the different yeah. roles you would say um, behind the scenes on your podcast? Yeah. So we have, um, we have several producers for the show who are kind of like higher level, you know, big picture. What are we doing? When are we doing it? What are the episodes? Um, we have a bunch of writers. Um, they're all over the country. Uh, some of them are researchers. Some of them are uh, current or former educators themselves. Uh, we have researchers who vet topics for us. 
Uh, then we also have um, a team of audio engineers um, who are the folks who add all the sound effects and make us sound great. Um, we have actors all over the place. Um, depending on the, you know, each each of our scripts has uh, either kind of time travel or space to we go to another place. And so we have to have different actors to portray different roles. Um, so we have a bunch of actors. So, you know, it's a, it's a small team and an amazing team, but um, it's, it's a, it's definitely a group effort to get these episodes out three times a week. I, that's a lot. I do two a week, and it's just me and my my podcast mm-hmm. manager, who's amazing. So, I mean, uh, if I had a big team one day. One day, Jerry. One day. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think I think you have it worse. I mean, you're, you're doing it all by yourself, you know. Right? So it's uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot, but we're going six months in yeah. strong, <laughs> two <Fantastic>. a week. <laughs> but I no, I think it. that's really good to hear. Um, just that something like this type of production is all a collaborative effort. And we talk about that with our students. So even hearing this, like, hey, not one person did this. They have a whole behind the scenes team. Mm -hmm. And that's like a good way to even share about like a STEM job that they might have one day. Who knows if podcasting will be in 20 years? Who knows? It could be something else. But working together as a team and having those soft skills and being able to be creative and share ideas, I think is really important. And like, it's a great model for them, for sure. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I, it's where we keep talking about, like, it's a whole other project, but we're always like, should we be creating some sort of way to sort of package the idea of how to teach kids how to do their own podcasts? Yeah. Um, because we hear that a lot from the smarty pants. They're like, how do we do a podcast? And we want to be on the show. And, you know, my thought is always like, rather than putting someone on something that exists, especially if it's a, if it's a child who is excited about creative uh, the creative process, is like teach them the process, like what you're talking yeah. about. Teach them how to collaborate, how to create, how to work in a team. These are such important life skills that are not really part of like official school curriculum and yes. um, are so important. So I I love that you're thinking like that. I think it's it's, it's exactly the right way to think about preparing kids for the real world and, oh, and real 100%. world problem solving. Yeah, yeah, yep. that's that's what we're in the business of. I teach the kids mm-hmm. that. It, the tools are going to change, but these soft skills aren't. And um, it doesn't matter if you have a STEM job, which most of you will, but you need STEM skills. Um, and that's yep. really, really important because yep. these Lego robotics aren't going to be here in like a few years. Like this, maybe you might not want to be a YouTuber. It's going to be something else, but you need those skills for sure. So um, I think that's a really good model for them listening to the podcast. So what is your favorite episode? On who's smart? Huh. What's, do you have? Are you maybe top three? Let's see. <laughs> uh, favorite episode? I feel like I just listened. Like, I'm, I'm going to look at my list of episodes here because I just there's so many. That's I know. Like, that's like which of your 350 children is your favorite? <laughs> um, let's see. I just listened to one recently that I really loved. I'm going to tell you which one it was. Uh, it was the oh the um, the flamingos episode was was really fun. We just did one last <laughs> month on on flamingos. I learned so many things from that episode. I did not know that <laughs> flamingos basically just have a giant foot, but that's like not a knee, but it's an ankle that they're standing on. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know yep. that. I didn't Weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we, j- oh, you know what? We just did one on Greek gods last Ooh. week that I just loved. It was all about, and what was great about it is, you know, we do hear from the kids a lot. They want to learn about Greek mythology. Hmm. But we know a lot of kids aren't necessarily into that. So we actually set the whole thing up as um, it's about Marvel superheroes and how each Marvel superhero that you love relates to a Greek god. Oh, and that that's was our a way cool into comparison. It. Yeah. yeah, so it was, really, it was really awesome. And then we tell the whole history of the, the Greek gods and the epic stories. And, and so it's it's a great intro. But uh, yeah, that's, exactly, that's a great example of how we take something that might feel a little dry to some kids, but we make it really fun and relatable to something they love like Marvel. And then, you know, by the end of the episode, they all want to know more about Greek gods. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have like on your, I haven't checked it out yet, but on your website, are there related activities? So if they listen to the podcast, are there like recommendations for activities that kids could do at home? 
There are some, not for every episode. Um, the thing that we do um, every single episode is we put out a newsletter. It's a free newsletter mm. called the Smarty Quiz that has little activities and, and follow-up quizzes. And they, you can sign up for that at who's, whosmarted.com. It's just a little, the little email sign-up box on there. And you'll just automatically start getting an, an email uh, for free with every episode, which is also a lot of teachers use it as a reminder of like, oh, there's a new episode. Oh, this is a topic I yeah. want to, you know, you so um, the email newsletter is actually the best way to to keep in touch with us and and also get additional activities. Ooh, I love that. That's so good because we're always looking for just some inspiration. So I all this will be linked in the show notes for sure because we love we love all these fun ideas. We we eat it all awesome. up for sure. <laughs> great, great. Yeah. Well, the fun thing about the newsletter too is we each one has like uh, I think it's three questions about that episode with like A, B, C, D answers. So it's a fun way to actually quiz the kids and see if they oh, pay yeah. attention and then have like some follow-up conversation. So oh, it's that fun. is good. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks for thinking of we're us all about, teachers. We're all about fun and games. Yeah, we yeah. love the fun and games. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. It's so much fun. It like makes me giggle out loud. And I don't have my own children, but I was listening to it in the car. I'm like, this is really fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's hilarious because like you're falling into this category. Of, like we call it like the sneaky adult listeners. Oh. So mm-hmm. like we hear from so many parents. They're like, we, our kids love your show, but we keep who smarted on in the car after the kids get out because we just love it. It makes us laugh. So and that was our goal was to make a, make a, a show for kids that's also really adult, you know, it's like adult friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, cause a lot of shows for kids, adults are like, oh my gosh, like, yep. I don't want to listen to this. But, um, you know, we, we even, you probably noticed we sneak in all kinds of little yep. jokes for the grownups. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like Disney. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, that yeah. was good. I'm like, mm-hmm. it's, it's so cute. <laughs> Thanks. No, I'm glad it's you really- caught that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll definitely um, add in a link at the end of this, or not a link, but a clip at the end of this episode so you guys can get a taste for what's who smart it is. Um, but you mentioned the Smarty Quiz. Is there any other ways that we can connect with you? and are the Who Smarted podcast and things that we should know about. Yeah, so um, we have a pretty active uh, Facebook community, which is just facebook.com backslash Who Smarted. Uh, we post content there all the time, uh, whether it's upcoming contests, giveaways, information about episodes. Um, that's great. Uh, and then, you know, obviously the email uh, newsletter through whosmarted.com is great, a great way to keep in touch with us. And those are kind of the two main ways. Um, but honestly, if you subscribe to the podcast in any podcast app, uh, you're going to get all kinds of information from us about upcoming, um, we do online adventures for kids like space adventures and sea adventures. So we always talk about that stuff on the podcast. Um, Uh. but those are the three main ways. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I know that yeah. teachers are going to end this podcast and then go into their player and start uh, subscribing and following the show because um, especially awesome. for when this comes out, like end of the school year, summertime's coming up. We need some ways to engage our kids. And I definitely think that this is a great connection and definitely a learning tool that should be impl- implemented with kids because we need, like, we teach them how to read so we can teach them how to listen and engage in audio content. It's such mm-hmm. a valuable skill. So, yeah, absolutely. The last thing I would say about that is we, we, we've read and done some research that, you know, really shows that when kids learn from audio, they actually are able to comprehend at a, at a grade level uh, once two grades higher. Which you mm-hmm. know you're you're mm-hmm. nodding your head yeah, yes because you my definitely head, yeah. know that already. <laughs> <laughs> and the other interesting thing is when they learn from audio, they actually are much more much more likely, some huge percentage more likely to engage in conversation Ooh. about the topic than if they read it in a book. So these are we just like to tell teachers this. So if anyone's like, well, why are you playing a podcast in your classroom? It's like, well, because the research shows if they're going to comprehend okay. more, engage more, and learn more. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just a, it's just a great little uh, piece of information to have in your back pocket. Mm-hmm. It's so true. We do read aloud. So might as well amp it up with a podcast, have some podcast mm-hmm. time. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I appreciate what you and your team are doing to just support learning of kids and just keeping them engaged and excited. And little you, little Jerry would be so proud of, of present Jerry <laughs> and all the it's awesome true. stuff that you guys are doing, you know? So it's really exciting. <laughs> and it's, 
um, really important and just having the support out there of people um, who are kind of around us in education and see the importance of really engaging tools and keeping it fun. So we appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank you. And we, we so appreciate the work you and all the teachers are doing. It's just, it's often thankless, but just know we, we there are many, many people who are grateful and, and really appreciate everything you guys are doing. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Well, thank you so much again for being here. And we can't wait to listen to the clip from Who Smarted. Awesome. Thank you, Naomi. Did you tell them one out of every five or 20% of all mushrooms are dangerous to eat? Oh, in fact, I just... And that there's another 20% you can eat but aren't very tasty? (laughs) Overall, only about 4% of all mushrooms are both edible and tasty. That's what makes mushroom hunting such a challenge. Of course, some smarty pants might be thinking, all mushrooms taste yucky. Ew. But have you really given them a fair shot? But hey, before we can even think about eating them, we need to find them first. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Elementary STEM Coach Podcast. I would love to connect with you over on Instagram at Naomi Meredith underscore or send me an email to elementary STEM Coach Podcast at gmail.com. Also, make sure to check out my website, Naomi Meredith.com, to see all the show notes from today's episode and shop my K-5 STEM resources. Any questions you have, needs for resources, or ideas for episodes, get in touch. I'll talk to you soon.